It's a small month for patches, which is good because we just had a really big one. But there's still some cool stuff to talk about. So let's talk about it on the Patch Report. Hello everyone, I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative, bringing you the patch report for November 2025. We've got a very light release from Adobe and Microsoft, thank goodness, but it does make me worry about what's coming in December. Let's not worry about that now, let's talk about what we have, and we'll start with Adobe. Eight bulletins, 29 unique CVEs in pretty much your standard stuff from Adobe. Nothing really stands out here. Um, maybe if you have to look at something, the InDesign, might be something that you look at. Uh, Illustrator for iPad is kind of big. I didn't know that there was that big a difference between Illustrator for iPad and Illustrator. Guess there is. Uh, but nothing exciting at all from Adobe, thankfully. Uh, all are priority three, none are under active attack. So let's move on to Microsoft. We have 63 new CVEs and your standard components, including the Windows subsystem for Linux GUI, which I find entertaining, but not very exciting. Uh, the total number of CVEs, 68, we've got, what, four that are critical? So not even that big a deal. One under active attack, and let's start with that, and that's a kernel elevation of privilege vulnerability. This is a simple type of bug that we see used a lot in ransomware and other malware. So you uh, execute code and then it uh, elevates to system and then you execute your uh, code execution bug and you take over a system. Um, Microsoft, as always, doesn't give us any indication of how widespread this is, but without any further information, we're going to say it's probably limited. Still pay attention to that and put that EOP on the top of your list. There will be more. Uh, Office. Ooh, oh my goodness. Yes, another month, another preview pane bug. Again, Microsoft says user interaction is required, but preview pane is an attack vector. I don't know what that means. Uh, so maybe it means if there's an attachment and then you click preview from the preview pane, you get code execution. That's all I can figure. Uh, regardless, it is time to consider disabling the preview pane. If you are in a situation where you are really, really paranoid or, you know, you just really want to be super secure, why don't you go ahead and do that? CLFS. Now, this is a bug that's not under active attack. And there may be some recency bias here from me, and I, I will fully admit this uh, because I just returned from Countermeasure, which is a conference up in Ottawa, Canada, where they talked about CLFS bugs that had been abused in the wild. And they look just like this one. So that's why I call this one out. Not under active attack now, but has been targeted a lot in the past by threat actors. So pay attention to this one. And finally, <laughs> I love it. The words agentic AI in a title of a Microsoft Security Bulletin. This is not the first bug uh, affecting Copilot. It's not the first code execution bug affecting Copilot. It's just the first bug to use agentic AI in the title. And I, I really just, I, it tickles me. Um, based on the description, explo exploitation is not going to be very trivial, but there are several Copilot bugs in this release that perhaps could be chained together. Um, they do come from different people, but it does make me wonder if there is an exploit in here somewhere. Um, this one could end up getting code execution on a GitHub repo. So yeah, it's really interesting and pay attention to that, especially if you're using Agentic AI for anything. This is worse than a hallucination. This is getting code execution in the foundation. So take a look at that. Our table this month is not deep, thankfully. But please notice, uh, you know, on my screen, the, the little uh, the little cross is there, a little bit hard to find, but there are several here that do need extra attention beyond just, uh, you know, looking at applying a patch. So definitely take a look at those and make sure that you are doing everything you need to do to fully address the security bug. So let's get down here to the other critical bugs. Um, Nuance PowerScribe 360. Uh, this is medical transcription software. Um, and you have to contact your customer service manager or tech support to get the update. I, I, there's, there's nothing more I can say about that. That's incredibly difficult for servicing. So if you use this, call your CSM and say, give me the update. And for people who say just patch, shove this in their face and then hit them with the rolled up newspaper. Guess know what newspapers are? Do, do you remember newspapers? It's wild. Um, there's a DirectX bug that's listed as critical, 
but it reads exactly the same as the director's bug that's listed as important. Why the difference? I don't know. Uh, the, the wording is exactly the same. CFS, CVSS is the same. So yeah, uh, there's a command injection in Visual Studio. Um, and let's see, the only other one uh, is a, a co-pilot agent interaction. Speaking of co-pilot, that does require some prompt injection. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, moving on to other code exec bugs, there's like a bunch here that are just uh, open and known with Office. Uh, these are preview pane were not an attack vector, so a little bit less important. Uh, the Azure monitor agent sounds really important. Um, and it, it actually sounds more severe than the rating. So an unauthenticated attacker could execute their code on affected systems without user interaction. I, I don't think that's wormable in this case, but boy, is it close. Uh, and it really sounds uh, Im important to me. That, that's in the world of yikes. The other yikes is a GDI plus, it's a CVSS 9.8. Uh, yeah, an attacker could get code execution without user interaction. And the, the exploitation here is a little bit difficult because you would need to be running a web service that would parse something uh, within a document. Um, so without user interaction, that would be very interesting. Uh, we have a SharePoint bug that's deserialization. Again, authentication is required here, but as we saw in July, auth bypasses in SharePoint are a thing. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then the Windows subsystem for Linux user interaction. But again, we got to do something other than just patch. We have a command line here that you must run. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could script this if you have a bunch of stuff out there, because uh, it's a very simple command line that you need to run. Uh, then there's the bugs in RS protocol, which always seem to be getting fixed. I still have yet to see anything in RS uh, be exploited in the wild. Uh, moving on to the privesque bugs, almost all of them are simply going to lead to system level code execution or admin if uh, you run a specially crafted program, like we saw with the kernel EOP that's being actively exploited. There are a couple where uh, you're gonna move from medium integrity to uh, local system or low integrity to medium integrity. Uh, beyond that, uh, the application, the administration protection, Privesk, uh, allows you to execute code as administrator because the, the protections aren't there. How about that? Kickfin Manager allows you to uh, bypass config manager and, and execute privileges there. Well, there you go. There's an interesting bug for OneDrive in Android that allows uh, people to essentially uh, gain access to system resources. That's what Microsoft says. I don't know if that means they could take over the entire phone or get a bunch of access that you wouldn't have otherwise. But if you're using OneDrive for Android, make sure you get that uh, update. Uh, there's a SQL injection bug, not very exciting, uh, but uh, yeah, so there you have it. Couple security feature bypasses that we need to discuss. Uh, ones in uh, both have a co pilot uh, angle, which is again interesting. There's a path traversal in Visual Studio Code Pilot chat extension. I think I said that right. That's a, a horrible name. Uh, but you can bypass file protections. The other one is uh, improper validation of AI outputs by co pilot for Visual Studio which is interesting because uh, you can use the AI outputs to bypass file restrictions. So that's that's neat. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see this demonstrated. So if you're doing research in this, uh, please show me how it works. I would love to know. Um, info disclosure bugs. Okay, so I'm not, the info disclosure bugs really aren't that interesting this month. Uh, it's memory leaks and it's sensitive information, but there's two bugs in license manager that were silently patched in October. <sighs> Microsoft, please don't do this. I'm sure this was just a, you know, an administrative thing on your part. You didn't mean to silently patch whatever, but you did. So please stop. Don't don't silently patch things. A uh, couple DOS bugs here, three of them. Uh, uh, two of them state that they could be used from a Hyper-V uh, low-priv client to DOS a Hyper-V uh, hypervisor, but it's very unclear how that would actually work because one's, uh, one's in DirectX and the other's in, in like a sys file. So it's very odd to me. Uh, but if you're running Hyper-V, don't overlook the DOS bugs because they're there. And finally, there's a couple cross-site scripting bugs in Dynamics 365. And that is it. That is all we have to talk about this month. Woo, thank goodness, because it's been, uh, you know, a crazy few months full of patches. I will be back on December 9th for our final Patch Tuesday of 2025. I can't believe we're saying that already. Oh, 
and then heading into January and Pwned to Own Automotive. Hey, Pwned to Own Ireland was fantastic. Had a great time there. Check out the details on our blog if you missed anything. And until then, uh, I will see you in December. Stay safe, everyone, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.